What's up everybody, welcome back to a brand new video on Lex Alexis. Today is another episode of the Transfer Show. I tell you what, the Championship does not slow down with transfers. Once again, I can't talk about rumours because we've got so many transfers to talk about, not only in the Championship, but the newly promoted clubs from the Championship making some incredible signings. They're stealing the headlines and honestly, I absolutely love it. We're going to talk about all the latest transfers that happened in the past week since my last Transfer Show. And I want to hear your guys' reactions to how your club's doing with those transfers. How do you think they're going to do? Are they going to gel? I would love to hear those responses in the comments down below. But if you guys like what you see, please give a video a like. It just reminds you up the channel. Please hit the subscribe button. It really does help the growth of the channel, especially with how I'm trying to record these videos these days. And please also share the videos as well. All of that really helps as well. But without any further ado, let's talk about the latest transfers in the championship. So one of the first transfers that actually took place, you know, during my last transfer show was John Ruddy. He was my rumour from last week, but he was confirmed actually before my video was released. So I looked a little bit of a mug talking about him in my rumour section when he was confirmed as a Birmingham City goalkeeper. I've got to say, I think Birmingham have done quite well there. I think last year they had a great goalkeeper in Sarkic. He was a shame for him that he got injured. He had that long-term injury and that meant, you know, they lost it for a good half of the season and Birmingham's defence substantially got a lot worse since then. Ruddy's had great experience of getting promoted with Wolves. He's had great experience with Norwich as well. And I've got to say, I think Birmingham have done quite well to get him in, to be honest. I think it's a sensible choice for a goalkeeper there. They also made the signing of Alston Trusty from Arsenal. I don't know much about him. But this is actually one of the favourite things about the transfer show. You know, we're hearing those names for the first time. We're going to see them, how they are going to perform in the championship. Don't know much about him, but honestly, I'm intrigued to see how he does with Birmingham at the moment. So another couple of signings have gone for Blackburn's way. They've lost Bradley Johnson. He's joined NK Dons. Someone that just wasn't getting too many game time. You know, he's at the peak of his career, in my opinion. So League One football may not be the bad shout for him but Blackburn have made their second signing off a transfer window and it comes in the name of Callum Britton he's left Barnsley to join Blackburn now this does make sense to me because Ryan Niambe is heavily linked with a move away his contract has officially run out he's currently a free agent and Wigan look like that they're very very keen to get him in so this is very very interesting stuff and I've got to say Callum Britton will be in that right back position likely filling in the void that is Ryan Niambe there don't think he's as good, personally. I think going forward, he's all right. But defence, I'm not too sure. He still needs to try and work on that balance. And I actually really want him to work on that this year. Because I actually think if he does work on that, he'll be a well-rounded defender. Blackpool have made the signing of Luis Fiorini. So he's from Manchester City's so youth squad to Blackpool. He's already featured for Blackpool in a couple of their friendly games. I think he played a couple of minutes against Rangers in their friendly there. So... Interested to see how he gets on there. He's already hitting the ground running there and actually had a pretty good performance for what I've heard from there. Ian Maxson is now a Burnley player. I did anticipate he'll join the championship again. It's a shame it's another loan. He just can't seem to catch a break, Ian Maxson. I just want him to play some permanent football and have some stability, but Chelsea just keep letting him go. And I've got to say, Burnley are really doing bits with their transfers right now. I was thinking he could have been a replacement for Maxwell Cornet if he was linked with a move away, but it's looking more and more likely that Cornet is going to stay and Dwight McNeil. So we could even see a scenario if Matson plays and Cornet gets pushed up as a left mid or left winger. God, that left-hand side will be incredibly dangerous in the championship. And I've got to say, Cumbly's building a good squad. He just now needs to introduce and try and gel them all in together. I think he could have a couple of difficulties with that. But overall... Great move so far. they just got to try and gel together now. Not to go for us, they made the signing of Wayne Hennessy as their second choice goalkeeper, replacing Ivan Horvath, who they sent out on loan to Luton Town. I've got to say, Not to go for us, they made some stellar transfers. So, for instance, they've made the double Huddersfield move of Harry Toffolo and Lewis O'Brien. I think for the value they got for both of them is really, really good. They've come together as a combined 10 million package, which I think is fantastic for. Not to get out. It's not exactly 10 million. It will include add-ons, etc. But that fee to get two players of that quality in Huddersfield squad, at least, is fantastic. I mean, Lewis O'Brien especially, to get him under 10 mil, technically, 
is really, really good. So I think McForest have done well there with their negotiating skills there. And they've got Jesse Lingard on a one-year deal. I've got to say, Forrest are really making intent to try and stay in the Premier League. If he plays like he did at West Ham, he'll be a great signing. If he plays like he did for Manchester United and there's all drama about minutes and that, it could be more of a hindrance. So I do think it's a bit of a coin flip with Jesse Lingard sometimes. But if you catch him on his good days and he gets constant game time, he will play some good football. So I think it's an exciting risk for Nottingham Forest there, but they've got to be careful though, because if you remember, they're spending so much money and getting so many players in, you know, Fulham did very, very similarly when they returned to the Premier League for the first time in five years. And they went overboard with the budget, got too many players in, couldn't gel in time and got relegated. So Forrest have got to be careful not to fall in that same trap. But I actually think they may not, to be fair. But I don't think they're going to finish as high as a lot of people are suggesting so far. More signings include Zach Steffen. He's now a goalkeeper for Middlesbrough, Man City to Middlesbrough. I've got to say, I think Middlesbrough have done well there. They've now got a goalkeeper for me that I think can lead a championship winning defence. I wasn't really sure with Daniels, I won't lie, as their first choice goalkeeper. So I'm glad that they got Zach Steffen in. The experience he's had with Manchester City, he's played some Champions League games with Manchester City, played a couple of um, league games and of course a couple of competition games as well. I think he's got the right amount of experience and I think this is the perfect opportunity for Zach Steffen, a redemption journey as well because he was memed a little bit um, with his performance for Man City against Liverpool in the MFA Cup. But he definitely has a great chance now to redeem himself and I really hope for his sake that he does get a great redemption because I think there's some great qualities about him there. We're talking about Middlesbrough gaining the player but he also lost a player. Jed Spence is now a Spurs player and I wasn't really surprised about that. Very predictable transfer in the end, 13 million. And I've got to say, that's a great deal for a defender in a championship to go for the 10 million budget is really, really good. Jess Benz has done well to, you know, rise himself to that value. I won't lie as a Chelsea fan, I'm a little bit worried if he is featured because seeing what he was doing in terms of Nottingham Forest's, you know, back line and how good he was going forward, the crosses he would have, I'm a bit scared about that Chelsea defence may not cope with it. But... I feel like he'll be one of those players that will have great moments. I don't think he'll settle in straight away, but I think he's a good long-term signing. So I'm really excited to see how he gets on with Spurs there. Middlesbrough have also lost Martin Piero. We're talking about Jess Benz being a really good signing, but right now I say Martin Piero is one of their worst signings. For the fact they got him in for around £10 million and he's now already loaned out to Boca Juniors, it's not great, isn't it? What they're really trying to do is to one, improve his quality, two, to get his value back up, and three, if he does have the quality, is he going to be good enough to play for Middlesbrough? And I've got to be honest, no. I know he's had his injury problems, and I do feel quite bad for him, but when he was called upon, he just wasn't reliable enough, unfortunately. So, unfortunately, that's the way it is. The Championship is a very, very ruthless league. You know, if you're not going to perform, you, you're ultimately going to get thrown out the door and unfortunately that's what's happening with Martin Piero. Jamie Shackleton is back in the championship. He has now joined Millwall from Leeds United. I'll be very interested to hear from Leeds fans what they think about this signing. For me, I do think he's more of a championship quality player, but to be fair, Shackleton was called upon in some really crucial moments at times for Leeds United. So are they going to miss that impact for, that Shackleton has at times? But I do think the championship is a good move for him personally and I think there will be a decent fit for him. So I'm really excited to see how he gets on with that. Norwich have made the signing of Gabriel Sara from Sao Paulo. 9.45 million and a centre mid. I've got to say, Norwich do spend quite a fair bit in the championship. It's a bit baffling how they do their transfer business. But I've got to say, I think with the ambition that they set, they definitely want to get back to the Premier League for the first time of asking. And in terms of what people think they're going to do, it's very, very mixed. Some think they'll do well, some think they'll underperform. I personally think they'll still do well with a great manager like Dean Smith in the championship level at least. And I definitely think they have got the best squad in the league. So personally, I do think Norwich will still be all right. And the fact they're still spending this money to get this quality amount of players in, I definitely think they're making an attempt to go back to the Premier League where they really, really want to be. Ali Ayese has joined Sunderland from West Ham. He was involved with Sunderland not so long ago, but Sunderland now got him permanently. And I've got to say, I know about him because my friend's a West Ham fan and he really is a big fan of him actually. So I do think he'll be a really good sign for something. And I've got to say, they're kind of under the radar a little bit, Sunderland. I feel like they're quietly going around their business. They're really improving their depth and quality. And they may be a team to watch out for Sunderland. You know, keep your eyes on them. Now another signing from Championship to League One. Corey Smith has left Swansea to join Derby. 
Derby making a huge number of signings there. Corey Smith being one of them. The one thing I kind of, you know, have a bit of a nag with him is his lack of consistency. If he improves his consistency, I think it would be a really good signing for um, Derby, actually, because he can have really, really good days, but that could be followed by really bad days as well. So, Corey Smith just needs to work on his consistency, but I think he could be a really, really good signing. Another championship signing to a League One side, Tyreek Backinson has joined Sheffield Wednesday. For me, needs to work on his attitude a little bit. Definitely has some quality, but he definitely needs to work a little bit hard. And I'm still waiting for this one season where he completely, you know, rips it apart, you know. He goes through spells where he's in the squad and then he's not in the squad. So likewise with Coyce Smith, there's this lagging inconsistency. And I'm really hoping he gets that with Sheffield Wednesday. But they definitely won't hold back if they don't think he's pulling his way. They're going to be wanting to go back to the championship. So Ty Madison's definitely going to have to perform under that pressure. Hull have made another signing in. There's another Turkish player. It is Dayizu Kun Sink. So, I mean, probably shouldn't try to say his first name. I'll just say Sink. Sink is a left midfielder from Anya Sport from the Turkish Super League. Don't know much about it, but honestly, interesting signing again from Hull City. They're quietly going about their business, and he may be looking at the King Lewis Potter replacement. Does share the same position as Lewis Potter in that left-sided midfielder, so will be interesting to see if he has very similar qualities in that front there. Sam Hutchison has joined Reading from Sheffield Wednesday, so Sheffield Wednesday gaining Backinson but losing Hutchinson in the process there. I mean, they're two really different players. You know, Hutchinson experienced but a bit older. Backinson lacking that really good season, but very, very young and still has got a lot of years left in him. So very interesting um, approach there. But Reading right now, almost taking who they can get right now. You know, they've definitely not got one of the youngest squads in the league, but they do have an abundance of experience, which I think can help them um, with this season there. And then we're going to finally talk about Swansea because there's a bit of movement going on with Swansea at the moment. Morgan Whitaker has left Swansea to join Plymouth on loan. I'm not surprised. I definitely think he needed a transfer you know, from a League One club, to be honest. He did have a good spell, you know, when he was at Lincoln City for a small brief period of time. I think Plymouth will be a decent club. You know, they'll be ambitious. They'll be wanting to get out of League One. So I think that will thrive with Morgan Whitaker there. Ben Hamer has left Swansea to join Watford. Now, that surprised me that Watford, you know, are picking him as his second choice goalkeeper, to be honest. But... Of course, they have let Ben Foster go. So Ben Hamer replacing one Ben for another to be the second choice goalkeeper. Don't think he'll be featured all that much there, but if he is featured, one thing he'll have is experience. That's literally the one benefit I'll give him from that. Final transfer that did happen is OK Yoksunu. Now, you may not remember this player, but I tell you what, he was incredible at one stage for West Brom when he joined halfway through the, I believe it was the 2021 season. He had a really big spell um, when he joined in January, and I think he only had half the season. But it's really interesting, I've got to say, him being in the championship, it really could be something special there. He's definitely got some great qualities around him being um, a wide player. They did seem quite static and a bit predictable at times. And I think Yoksulu would definitely carry some really, really exciting moves um, into his play there. He comes from Celta Vigo to West Brom on a free transfer as well. So I've got to say, not only that, but some great business as well from West Brom with getting him at nothing at all. So I think they've done quite well there. So these are all the transfers that have taken place. Unfortunately, due to time, I really can't do rumours, but I will try and talk about more rumours later on. I mean, quickly, if I can spout out a couple, Ryan Niembe looks like he's going to Wigan, as I said. Dwight Gale is looking like he's going to be a Stoke City player. So there's a couple of interesting developments there as well. There's some links going on with Fulham right now that they could get a couple of players in as well. There's been a whole lot of movement, but this is my conclusion to this transfer show. If you guys like what you see, please give the video a like and just to the channel. Please do hit the subscribe button and please also share the channel. And please let me know of your current club's thoughts in the transfer window in the comments down below as well. That wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Guys, I'll let you go. It's only in this video. As always, I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everyone.